all of you that you joined this invitation here to come back to listen to my talk. Be here, it's a great pleasure for me to give over my experience I collected in the field of treatment of also stroke patients, lots of stroke patients using different methods and uh, methods I would like to introduce you today because I got the experience that you all know who had stroke, who had stroke, who is a caregiver. For all of us, the stroke survivors, the caregivers, the people who didn't have stroke, it's important to do anything to train the brain to avoid an next stroke, for example. And that's the thing I got as an experience that most of the treatments, of course, you all appeared, you all used, were very helpful to you to come back to normal life, to better life, to survive the complications after stroke. Without all the therapies you have done, you wouldn't be in a condition to be here, maybe. Maybe you would be dead as well. And so it's very nice to see what rehabilitation can be do. But you have also collected the experience, I think, that all the treatments you got, most of the treatments you got, were targeted on the muscle system, on the joints, on the movements. What about the brain? The reason for the stroke was in the brain, not in the muscles. And so I got the question or built up the question and asked what can be done to improve the treatment of patients after stroke to involve the brain in this kind of treatments as well. Because everything what can get realized by peripheral trainings in the muscle systems might get realized by activation of the brain. And so it should be possible to activate this possibility to use the brain as I think the most important uh, part in rehabilitation. And so I will tell you methods to improve brain motor functions because both together should be a good possibility for better surviving after stroke. Maybe also some methods I will introduce you could be good for the people who didn't have stroke to avoid stroke, for example. And that's why I try to give you also an impression on that. I go through my slides. Uh, you see, we took with us also some equipment to make after my talk some demonstrations to show you how some of the methods we use could uh, really uh, look like to show it and to demonstrate it. Brain motor functions can get improved, uh, by my opinion, to train the brain. We must train the brain, we must tell the brain for motor processes, for rehabilitation, but also for functioning in daily living <coughs> and also for mental processes to avoid further complications, maybe also to do anything to avoid a further a stroke or a, a sudden stroke. And to train the brain for motor functions is related to several processes in the brain. For example, each movement we do, active or passive, also during rehabilitation, the, m the movements of the lesion paralyzed muscles leave neurobiological tracks in sensory and motor cortical structures in the brain. Our brain is open to store each information it keeps, each information from the first day of living and the time before as well. And so the movements of the muscles, active or passive, leave tracks in the brain, in structures in the brain which are important for further rehabilitation. So the brain really can get trained for new coming for new upbuilding motor processes. We have in the brain several structures. We knew it from the anatomy. We knew, for example, there is a part called the motorical cortex, the green one. Behind one is a structure called sensory cortex. What does it mean? If any impulses go from the muscles through the peripheral nervous system and reach the brain, it leaves with sensory cortex and leaves a memory cell. And this memory enables the brain to start a new activation of all our muscles by activating the motorical cortex. If our brain makes the decision to move the, the thumb or the left leg, the information is stored in this green part of the brain to activate corresponding muscles to do it. And we have more centers on the surface of the brain. The one I just told you, the motorical era, the sensorical era. Then there is a big part for the speech. And you also had the experience stroke con can also 
target the speech and suddenly the speech is different and it has to get relearned to come back to normal speeching processes. Also the understanding of speech can get involved, that anybody tells you something, you knew what it means before, but suddenly you can't remember what it was. And then it's difficult for the brain to remember to do rehabilitation because the brain cannot remember what it has to do. It lost this information or the information is blocked anything. And also we have a center on the surface of a brain for seeing, for information processing in the optical system. This also can get involved in stroke patients. And this part, this green structure you remember I showed you, is divided in several organ systems, all of them we have. All of the muscles we have, our, the motoric activation of all the muscles we have is just realized in this green part I showed you before. You see it comes from the toes, ankles, knees, hips, shoulders, elbows, thumb, neck, lips, jaw, tongue, again, everything. And if you try to demonstrate this practically, it looks like that most of the muscles, all of the muscles are rep represented in this green part on the surface of the brain. And you see most of the muscle activation is located in the hand and in the face because these structures are related or seems to be the most complicated system in our body for moving, for learning, for remembering. You know, without hands we can do really nothing. And each movement, as simple, as easy, as complicated as it could be, all the movements in the fingers just to screw a bulb in the wall, for example, it's a very complicated process for the brain. And the, brain, uh, the stroke survivors maybe can remember that such complicated movements suddenly disappeared and should get relearned and that's the thing which is very difficult. And also the brain, all the mimic we have, all the information we can take over just by changing the muscles in the brain from smiling till aggressivity. It's realized by this green part of the surface of the brain. How it works? For example, that's the connection between brain, spinal cord, peripheral nervous system and the muscles anywhere in the body. If our brain tells we must move the left leg, for example, the information to move the left leg, how it should be done, is stored in the sensorical part of the surface of the brain. And then this information goes down through the spinal cord into the corresponding peripheral nervous system and is reaching anywhere the muscle, the corresponding muscles to move the left leg, for example. And then in the muscle structure are sensory receptors who measure are the muscles enough activated to less, normal, not normal. And then this decision, the result of this spontaneous measurement goes back through the peripheral nervous system to the spinal cord and comes up to the brain. And then the brain, this information can store in these sensory cortical structures and can get stored for start new movements, for example, of the corresponding muscles. And if anything is happen or a lesion after stroke there will be, then all this information just to move this muscle is lost suddenly. And then it's not possible to move with muscles to move the left leg, for example. How it works? Just another example. Maybe this symbolic patient will catch a fly. The fly comes on his hand and his idea is if she arrives my hand I will close the hand to catch this fly. If his brain and his muscles could work normal it could be possible. Not every time because the fly is very fast. But you can also be very fast. You can learn it. You can fly uh, flying zoom zoom <laughs> and can catch it for example. How it works? What is our summary of our, what is our brain and nervous system doing? If a fly comes down and moves on the hand, this information goes through the peripheral nervous system to the spinal cord. And this information, a fly arrived nearby my hand, goes up to the brain. 
and it passes several structures in the brain. At first, it passes the so-called hypothalamus. There, vegetative regulations suddenly can get improved. And vegetative regulations also improve the thermal regulation, the activation of sweet glands. You all got the experience. If you will do a complicated movement, for example, it can be possible, suddenly you have sweet on the head. And this is done and realized in this part of the nervous system. And next, the limbic system is important for affective regulations. What, is, what does it mean? Here a decision will be made, is it important to catch this fly, yes or no? If it's not important, you will not be interested to catch the fly. If your brain tells you it should be important, you will do everything what can be possible to catch this fly. And this information, for example, here the decision is made, I will catch this fly, goes up to the motorical and some sensorical cortical structures to activate the corresponding muscles, we have suddenly activate very fast to catch this fly. And so the impulses go down through the same structures back to the spinal cord, through the peripheral nerves to the muscles which can catch the fly. And you see, lots of regulatory processes are involved to do the simple task to catch a fly. The task could be also a different one, to go, to move, to keep, to lift up your left or right leg or arm, close the eyes or not. And all this can get disturbed if suddenly everywhere in the brain is uh, appears a stroke. And dependent on the placement, on the location, on the structures where the stroke appeared, different functions of the brain can, ge can be suddenly disturbed. And this activation is controlled by inhibitory processes who tell us, must I close my hand very fast? Must I look to the fly to make the decision now it's time to, cl shut the, to close the hand? And all this is regulated in our brain. This you know, you have seen several pictures, how it looks, anywhere suddenly stroke can appear. Symptoms. And sometimes you feel tired, the sleep is disturbed, you have sensory discomfort uh, feelings, or the stroke also can appear unawaked suddenly from one second to the next one in every body of us. Stroke means blood flow in specific regions of the brain is suddenly disrupted and the brain cells have no much time for surviving. If they get not continued oxygen, if oxygen consumption in the brain tissue is disrupted or disturbed or disconnected, then it takes just a couple of seconds or minutes and the brain starts, the brain cells start to die. You know these pictures where you have seen them maybe very often, it looks in the MRT, you can see the focals, the regions, the places where the bleedings are disrupted, where the stroke is placed and the neurologists or the neuroradiologists can conclude what are the regions of the brain, what functions are there located and they will correspond with the symptoms the patient shows. Yeah, or another slide show of uh, MRT slides which show how fast it can change from time to time and how fast the symptoms can appear. Why brain motor function should get improved very fast? The brain can also be trained for rehabilitation. Remember my first words, all the experience you have not only in Asia, also in Germany or in Western countries, most of the treatments, all of the treatments are located in the muscles, in the joints, in the movements. But the most important part is to train the brain for rehabilitation. The brain must get cold, realize all the processes which will be possible, which are stored in your brain to come back to the functions you have before the stroke. So the functional reorganization or compensatory reorganization, also the possibility to build up new sensomotorical pathways will be possible. It should get done. 
and it should get done not years after the stroke, after years of motorical rehabilitation, maybe at the same time would be the best. Maybe before motorical rehabilitation starts, the brain should get told, remember all the things you learned in your life, you could do before the stroke, do everything to do it again. And that's the idea I had to find out methods, therapeutic methods, to tell this information to the brain. You know, the brain cells die very fast. It's not the primary problem. Also in the healthy brain, it's a result of measurements of a neurophysiologist uh, showed us that every day in the normal healthy brain, from childhood till elderness, die 10,000 nervous cells. 10,000, every hour, suddenly, every day, everywhere, any time, but it doesn't matter. We have milliards of nervous cells, so these 10,000 are nearly nothing. And corresponding nervous tissue starts to compensate this loss, this normal loss. And so our brain, it's a part of a normal, of a normal aging. Brain cells die, but we have enough to get 100 years old and older. How this functional reorganization is working? In each of the muscles, in the paralyzed as in the normal muscles, we have receptors, the so-called muscle spinals, who measure the tension of a muscle system, who measure is the muscle relaxed, is he activated, is he paralyzed, is he in a state of um, losing his function. And all this information measured from these receptors go again to the sensorical cortical structures to store this information, how is the tonus of a muscle, how is the tension of a muscle. And the same information goes to the cerebellum, back in the brain, to realize muscle coordination. The cerebellum's most important task is to realize every coordinative movements of the muscles. And then the corresponding motorical structures are activated to control the muscle system again and to tell the muscle make a construction, relax or get activated or get relaxed and this can get learned and learned the more this is treated, the more this activation, relaxation, movement of the muscles are done. That's the physiological background of motorical rehabilitation. And you see the brain is involved in this process and if a brain will get forgotten to treat in this rehabilitative process as well, it takes more time for rehabilitation. That's a picture which just, just shows <coughs> the functional MRT during the movement of specific muscles. It's a normal patient, a patient pre, after stroke, but pre-rehabilitation, and a stroke patient post-rehabilitation, after rehabilitation. And here we see the activation of corresponding structures of the brains if specific muscles get activated. The brain tells move his muscles. After stroke, before rehabilitation started, we see it gets less. The activation in these structures get less from hour to hour after the stroke. After rehabilitation in the stroke patient, we see the structures get increased get normalized. It's possible to reactivate neighbored structures, to get more functioning, to learn what the, uh, the, the regions who appeared for stroke had done before, and so a compensation of brain functions will start and goes up the more and more the muscles and the brain got trained. The brain can learn to remember movements which got lost after stroke. You can move the fingers in specific way. You can measure the muscle activities by surface electrodes on the muscles on the fingers, for example. The patient can see his activation of EMG, electromyographic activation in his muscles, and the brain realize what's happened in the fingers. And then the brain remembers with movements and learns to activate 
corresponding systems or corresponding regions in the brain to do this job to improve the finger movements or the movements of a leg or the movements of a muscle where the stroke was located or is located. It just shows how fast it works, how fast the brain can get disturbed within a couple of minutes the region goes up and goes up. That's why the reason is call the emergency come to the stroke unit as soon as possible because within minutes and hours the brain can get survived by specific medical pharmaceutical uh, therapies to give the brain the chance to increase the blood flow to the everything that the brain cells will not die. This basic life-saving methods and emergency care must be done of course at first. After that brain and muscles, best would be both together, should get prepared after emergency care to remember all the functions the, the patient had before. So immediately after an emergency care, for example, the metabolic situation in brain and muscles should get stabilized. And you know, metabolic situation in corresponding tissues can get very fast improved using a technique, some of them may be experienced with method as well, the BCR therapy, microcurrency, who activates the muscle metabolic situation very fast. We come back to that point later on. But after emergency care, also cognitive functioning of a great brain must get maintained. To remember all the mechanisms for logical thinking, for, for answering on questions in a correct way. And then the muscles and the movements should get started to train the normal physiological rehabilitation. And important is that the contraproductive circumstances and situations should get avoided. And contraproductive situations are, for example, anxiety, depression. And I re can't remember a stroke patient who, tailed, who told that he wouldn't be angry about, for example, a further stroke. And there is an angry situation, anxiety develops, also depression can get developed because you think, oh, I will never get healthy, I will never learn to move my legs or arm again. It makes depression and it might makes anxiety. And so we should find possibilities to avoid this as well. This metabolic situation in the muscles must get maintained as fast and as successful as po possible in paralysis, in immobilization, also combined with degeneration, inflammation and or loss of energy in the muscle, in the brain, because this modifies intracellular met metabolic situation with deviation from the normal tissue-specific enthalpy. It's a kind of energy in the systems of our body which are necessary to do her job. And here is a function or a picture, just a resample of an investigation in a patient before and after this kind of therapy called BCR, biological cell regeneration, regulation. It's a common and effective method to, to normalize and to maintain brain muscle metabolism. Here we, you know maybe the techniques, we just will make a demonstration after my talk using this kind of machines, home machines, which show that metabolic situation here in a patient before treatment is in a very bad range. Normal would be between these two black dotted lines. After a single treatment, it, it's possible to come back with metabolic situation in normal ranges. What does it mean? If you place the electrodes for this metabolic reactivation on the muscles, the muscles are better prepared to realize further rehabilitation, physical rehabilitation. If you learn the, uh, the cells of the brain to normalize the metabolic situation, the brain is able to come back to all the things like it has been done before. Now, for example, three investigations or three treatments with BCR in three days followed up, just one treatment a day, about 24 minutes. First day we have seen really bad values concerning these metabolic parameters measured in the tissue of the muscles. After the second day we see it will increase. 
after a third day all reached in the normal uh, ranges. The system I just showed you live here, very easy to use by the patients in at home placement of the electrodes, select what it should be done and then the system can do his job to reorganize the metabolic situation in muscles and you should be also in the brain. The brain is also a very important target of this kind of therapy. Another method, because I told you before I tried to do everything to avoid symptoms like depression or anxiety in stroke patients as well, because anxiety and depression are the most important enemies for good rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. And so biofeedback is a method where biological signals of a body can get measured and can get online showed the patient so he can see how specific body functions are working online at the corresponding time. And for example, a parameter called electrodermal activity. It's the activity of the sweet glands we have in the fingertips, measured like that. An amplifier who measures with the signal and sends the signal to the computer to show it on a screen and so the patient can follow up the activity of a peripheral nervous system which regulates this parameter and can show the patient can I relax or not. If a patient cannot relax, we can, we can interpret this as a possibility to become steadily stressed, to be not stress resilient, to be anxiety, uh, to live in anxiety situations, to feel depressive symptoms then this value will increase. In this example we see this parameter in a pre-stimulus value in a normal range and here a stress test and stimulus, just and stimulus appeared with signal increased. I told the patient now relax and he could relax as well. And the more a patient can learn to relax by himself is the brain able and open for new information processings. To learn and to remember regulatory processes in the brain which got lost by stroke. And so the brain is more able to remember these lost processes the more it can get really relaxed and avoid stress and anxiety. So this technique is a kind of cognitive functioning of a brain must get attained. The skin conductance level reflects the level of psychological and physiological arousal and excited by, co by, by cognition or emotion. And measuring the skin conductance is based on the sweet glands located on the hands, also on the soles of the feet, respond primarily and very fast when the body is specifically activated and also disturbed by anxiety, stress or depression. The more the body is activated, the more sweet is secreted by the glands. The sweet is comprised of salt water, which can conduct electrical signals in the skin. And so the electrical signals, the more the sweet is produced, the greater the flow of electricity will be. And this skin conductance measures electrodermal activity, responds quickly to emotional and psychological signals or stimuli very quickly with a second for example and that's a thing we can also demonstrate after the talk. Here just an example how a patient, it was a stress patient and a patient with anxiety. He had a stroke years before and was very exhausted about and worry about I hope I will not get a further stroke. Steadily he was living with this kind of anxiety. I hope it will not come back. And it was a normal volunteer. Please just only look to the two black curves. In this patient I did the following. I asked them at first, try to relax for five minutes. It's not so easy. Yeah, you, we can try it later on. If I tell you to relax uh, for five minutes, what is the patient is doing at first looks to the watch. Not longer, five minutes he told. That's the first kind to, in, to improve the stress and he can't relax. Relaxation should be done without a watch or without time. The normal person could relax because this measured electrodermal activity went down. The stress patient and anxiety patient could not relax. The electrodermal activity slightly increased. 
At this time point, I told the patient, within the next minutes, a stress stimulus will appear. I didn't tell what. The normal reaction is a sudden increase, and then he comes back to the normal state appeared before. The anxiety patient, after the information, a stress stimulus will appear, this value further increased. Then the stress stimulus appeared. It was just a kind of mathematical calculation. For example, I told him, try uh, to calculate 230 minus 17, and so on. It's a very hard task because we forgot to calculate by the head. We have the mobile things which help us to calculate. It makes stress in the normal as in the patient as well. After a couple of seconds, I told stop to calculate and try to relax again for a couple of minutes. The normal patient or the normal volunteer could come back and could relax, similar way like before. The patient with anxiety and stroke after stroke could not relax. He was kept up after stress in increased conditions of his value. It shows he is very sensitive on further stress. The more stress he appears, the anxiety will increase. That's an, per, an, an example for biofeedback of activity of a muscle system, electromyographic activity measured on the surface of muscles by electrodes. And here we see a patient with spastic paralysis pre and four weeks after training using all the methods I introduced. We see two things. We can measure the activity of the muscles in microvolt, the absolute activation. Here it was 11.7, here it was 19.1. We know a muscle is relaxed when we measure three or less microvolt. So this patient could not relax his paralyzed, spastic paralyzed muscles. And we see lots of spontaneous activations in the muscle system, which is the background for the, para for the spastic paralysis. After training, using the methods to relax the brain, to activate the metabolic situation by BCR in the brain and in the muscle, both systems were able to learn to keep relaxed. And four weeks later, we see the muscle activation or the muscle to, uh, activation measured in microvolt decreased from 11 to 6, on the other side from 19 to 8, nearly in the normal values. Not really normal, but much less than the time before. And the amount of spontaneous activations is dramatically reduced. Treatment was continued and he learned more and more to reactivate his muscle system. And after that, the brain is able for better physical rehabilitation. You remember all these kinds of therapy, most of the stroke survivors know did, they did it. It could be possible that all kinds of physical rehabilitation will act faster and better the more the train and the muscles are prepared by the methods I told you. Come back to this sample, you remember the fly, and suddenly after such training, we have a sensomotoric activation, which for example cause something like a software for new functional reorganization. Yeah, if a fly comes on the head, the same informations go to the brain, and now the brain is prepared to make a faster decision, maybe to take to make a correct decision to tell the muscles in the hand, if a fly comes as soon as and fast as possible, catch the fly. And then the brain learned to remember all these informations to activate with muscle system also after stroke. And something like that can be trained or can get trained or should get trained by stroke patients as soon as possible because the brain should uh, learn not to forget all these regulatory processes it, it had before. And that's important to do it as fast as possible after the stroke. And the more the central nervous activity can get reduced to achieve central relaxation, the better sensomotoric programming can get worked. And this kind of programming is something like the de development of a new software which is stored on the hard disk on the brain maybe in the auto-start system of his hard disk, 
to get activated suddenly if it's necessary. It's training the brain for daily living and also for mental processes. And this measurement, for example, this kind of measurement, the electrodermal activity, I showed you or I told you how important it is to avoid anxiety, to avoid stress, to avoid depressive reactions, can get trained by the patient at home as well. You remember this picture with the two points on the fingertips and the cables can get connected to a smartphone or to uh, a tablet you have and then you can see the online measurements in your skin conductance activity as a stress parameter which shows you can I relax or not. This patient here, this example, just is no relaxation, it's a continuous activation. Maybe this patient here uh, was at the beginning of a training and had started to learn, for example, to use his breathing to relax. And because I told it should be done several times at home, he can use this kind of technique very easy. How brain motor functions can get improved, both methods, uh, I, 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 some examples for biofeedback. And another one is medical hypnotherapy. What it is, hypnotic states, hypnotherapy. You heard about this. Maybe you have seen it in the TV. There exists something like show hypnotic sessions, for example. The hypnotherapy can tell the brain to do anything else what got lost before. How it looks, medical hypnotherapy is a state where the patient is in a deep, relaxed situation. The brain is so deep, depressed that structures in the brain where, in, where information processing is performed, where deciding processes are realized, these structures are highly activated the more the brain in the surroundings is relaxed. And that's the physiological markers of deep hypnotic state. And in this deep hypnotic state, he lies in this state, he cannot move the arms, not the legs, he cannot open his eyes, but I can tell his brain to do anything. If I can, I tell him pr his brain, for example, reduce your blood pressure if he had an increased one. Wow. He starts to do this. And so I can tell the brain, and now we will start functional reorganization in the brain. Prepare to do this. And these are informations which get realized. Because we all are influenceable. We can get influenced by external informations. You know it by yourself. If you read an advertisement in the newspaper, the first time the answer is, oh, I do not need this. You read it the next time again. You read it every day, for example, and suddenly you make a decision, and now I try it and I buy it. And after that you tell, oh, why I did buy it. And so we are influenceable. And the more and more you are relaxed, I just need one session and I would tell you after the session go out and buy a Coca-Cola for example, you would do it. And if I tell the brain, be prepared for functional reorganization, then it will, it will be do it. Yeah? It looks like that for example, just to show hypnosis is not something like an unknown mechanism, it's advanced neurophysiology. We see functional changes in the brain in a normal state and in deep hypnotic uh, situation. That's why I tell the brain is able to do things we tell him. Repeated information will cause conditioning processes like new software on the hard disk. And each training, as small it may be, acts as an update of the software. So the brain can get told to do his job. And I think after that, I will show you, just because we are now finished with the talk, a short video about stroke. Just a minute to summarize all together because this video includes this BCR technique as a, as a very necessary technique to prepare the muscles and now you should learn it also the brain can get prepared for better rehabilitation. I have to go out to start with this video. Are you or your loved one battling stroke? You must be aware that maximum recovery from stroke disabilities happens within the first six months. Time is one of the most crucial factors to recover from stroke, and many patients and caregivers underestimate its importance. They fail to realize that to maximize recovery, they must start racing against time from the very first day. 
To speed up recovery, one should also get treated as frequently as possible to get the cumulative effect of consecutive treatments. Introducing Power to Cell, the latest home-based stroke therapy from Germany. The Power to Cell system works at the cellular level, regulating disrupted cellular metabolism. While conventional stroke therapies like massage, exercise, stretching, electrotherapies largely focus on external physical stimulation, Power to Cell strengthens the body's self-healing ability from the inside. Adding cellular therapies with cumulative effect can thus accelerate stroke recovery. Use Power to Cell to maximize recovery from strokes. Thank you.